What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Barefoot Garage and tonight we're going to try to start the 914. Alright, so if you remember the last video we left off with an issue with the coil. We have this new coil that includes the igniter from the dub shop. Shout out to Mario for hooking us up and getting us the right part. There's our new coil, just temporarily mounted there with one screw. I have to change the ends on the plug wires that I already made and re-terminate this connection. I don't have the disconnect tool, so I just cut it and recrimp it. But theoretically, that is everything we need. So we are gonna go into the software, we're gonna get on the tech support line and help them help them help me coach through the first startup here so we can turn off the injector, check the spark, check the timing and stuff. So fingers crossed, there's no issue with those ground outputs for the ignition. Uh, I really don't wanna have to pull new wires from ignition outputs three and four, cause that sounds like a hassle. So we're gonna do our best to get this thing going here. I'm gonna get the camera started once we get it going and I know we have it right, I'll show you the settings and everything we're doing in the computer so you guys understand kind of what we've set up and the way we've set it up cause I've kind of uh, collected all that information from each sensor and uh, from the harness and looked at a bunch of different information to kind of see what to put in. So once it's running, I will show you guys that stuff. So let's get into it. So what you just saw was an excellent sign. I'm getting spark coming out of my timing light. You have to check the timing through this little tiny hole here. And so my neighbor's coming over. We're going to crank the car and look in there because in the computer here, I'm not sure how well I can show you this. It is asking me my firing angle here. It wants to know that firing angle and I'm hoping it's zero, but I'm not really sure. So I wanna make sure that I can see some timing marks down in the engine before I get Haltech on the line, because once they're here and I'm on the phone, I can't do both things. So all things are starting to point towards, gonna start. Yeah, that, that sounded pretty close. I it, it was a little low piece, so I think the idle's just really low. It did sound like it had all four cylinders, but it, like I said, it's, it's a little hard to tell. It smells, it smells real fat. I don't know what the wide band said. <laughs> okay let's turn it off and let's just see if it'll crank on that timing that we set in there and see if that seems happy i know i can turn i know at least i can turn it back on and make sure it, and start it i didn't like that as much oh sorry <laughs> i'll wait for you <laughs> okay 
Now, when I'm making these changes, do I need to send, restart, whatever to make sure that it is taking what I'm sending it? Does that make sense? Okay. The main setup back here. Okay. Okay, yeah, so it, but basically it'll prompt me if it needs me to do that. Okay. All right, let's leave it like this. All right, welcome to the Haltech ESP software. I'm gonna go through some of the basic setup stuff that I've done here. Um, this is kind of the screen you, once you connect here and uh, is gonna be what we see when we log in. So make sure that you, when you plug this in, it's connected to the car um, and we're gonna go ahead and go to um, connect right there. And then you can go to your basic setup. So um, this is how we put the basics and the parameters to tell the car what we're gonna do. So we'll go setup, main setup, and then we will go ahead through this setup. So um, under the main setup here, you got some of your engine parameters. How many cc's is it piston engine? How many cylinders? Um, your firing order, which isn't a big deal on your crank trigger or on your uh, wasted spark kind of a setup. The throttle limits is something that they had already defined. It's not something I had really messed around with. Um, so as we go to trigger setup here, this is what I need to know from the dub shop. This is a 36 minus one generic missing tooth crank trigger. Um, that TDC offset angle is something they gave me uh, with the system. Um, and they recommended that I leave the RPM filter on one and the quick start enabled. Um, so that's basically what we've got here. You can also see some of the trigger sensor setup down here um, where we've got it as a falling edge hull effect. Uh, with the pull-up on. That is an important part of getting the crank trigger set up. As we move over here to fuel, we have it set up as a VE or volumetric efficiency uh, as our map. We're using the map sensor as a load reference. You've got to put in your fuel pressure. Um, that is something that's going to be blank. You've got to do that. The other thing it's got set up here is that it's four injectors, semi-sequential, so it's going to fire them in pairs um, because we don't have a cam sync. That's basically all we can do with that. Um, as we move over one more to ignition, uh, still losing the map sensor as our load sensor. It's a wasted spark falling edge. Um, it's got the dwell on constant charge. That was what they recommended. But where you've really got to spend your time is that firing angle and the lock mode. So what you'll do is either with cranking or running, I turn the lock mode on and use your timing light to find out what angle off from the computer's thoughts the uh, actual crank angle is for top dead center so when i cranked it up and i put that on lock it fires the spark at top dead center and i could see the timing mark for zero and i just kind of walked it in one degree each direction to see which way it went and then i found three and a half put it right in the middle of the little notch on the fan on the 914 so important step it probably would have run fine three and a half degrees off but it's an additional thing to make sure that it's right basically you're trying to make sure the computer and reality are lined up here so that's kind of your basic setup here uh, in the early, early main section. Um, there are some other things that you'll look at here under the functions, devices, and, and data log. Really, devices and data log I have not used particularly. So when the functions here, this is where we're going to go ahead and tell it what's connected to what. Um, so I have my fuel pump on DPO5. That's where they dedicate it to be. I'm running it through the relay on the stock relay board, so no fuse or relay separately from there. I am using a two wider IAC, idle air control, a Ford style. It's on DPO2. Um, I have the air intake temperature sensor set up on AVI4. That's where they dedicate it to be. Um, one of the things they said is on your air intake temp sensor and on your cylinder temp sensor or your head temp sensor, make sure the pull-up's enabled on those two wire sensors. That's an important detail there that I did not know. So, I am using the stock manifold pressure sensor, the one that's basically built into the um, 
computer. I don't see why you would not use that one, but that's very easy. I do have an oxygen sensor configured here. Unfortunately, the idle control or the oxygen sensor control where it provides some of that feedback, it's not working very well. So yeah, there you can see onboard pressure sensor on the Haltech. Um, I'm not the, I have the RPM meter set up right there. I do have the tachometer set up on DPO1. Go into that tach adapter for my stock setup. Here's where you can calibrate your throttle precision sensor. You just tell it where it is and calibrate it full throttle, zero throttle, super easy. So devices haven't really messed with anything in here um, right now. And then data log, same, have not really done anything with the data log. So let's get out of here and go look at some of the other settings. Uh, starting at the top here, this is our base fuel map. Um, I've gone ahead and taken out everything that is positive pressure. Um, you can see I've got my wideband, my battery voltage, my ignition angle, my ignition timing in milliseconds, air intake temp sensor, coolant temp sensor, throttle position, the map sensor, and the RPM around the outside. That's a pretty basic setup, but I don't have that many sensors, so it's all I need to know. So you can adjust this chart based on your RPM limits and boost, not boost. So it's a, honestly, it's a really small chart because I don't have boost and I'm not revving this thing to the moon. Um, so I really only played with the fuel trim under 1500 RPM to try to stabilize the idle. Um, it's very easy to adjust. Um, you just click a cell and you can type a number or you can highlight a group of cells like this and go page up, page down or punch in a number or whatever it is you want to do. Um, so that page up, page down just changes it a small percentage and you can kind of bump through that in live time. So when I was setting up the idle, I would do that to make sure that I could get the idle tuned right. Um, there's a lot of corrections you can make for air intake temp, coolant temp. Um, I've not really had a ton of that. We don't have a ton of huge wild temperature swings, but you can see it adjusts it for like a really cold temperature. If it was for some reason negative four degrees, um, then it would see a little bit more fuel there. So um, some advanced stuff that I've not particularly gotten into, but really the base correction is what I've got. You can do an overall. If it's fat everywhere, you can do plus 5% or minus 5% or whatever you want to do. The ignition angle is where we also spend some time. I have a base ignition map set up in here um, that you can see here, which is basically a, a generic 2056 uh, idle control or a basic 2056 ignition map setup. I'm not planning to get super aggressive with the timing. This is more or less what a stock engine would do. I'm not looking to push that particularly. So you could obviously make some corrections in here for cranking zero demand uh, temperature sensors and stuff as well. Nothing with changing the throttle, idle control. I'm using that two-wire Ford IAC. Um, I've got it set up with a target RPM. So once you get into that warm temperature range, between 1,000 and 950 is where we want to see that thing idling. Um, it has a lot of other settings in there that you can mess with, but basically we set the hertz uh, or the frequency for the IAC, and it's going to do the rest for us. So that's honestly really easy. It idles better than any D-Jack car I've been around. Um, have not messed with D cell. You can set up RPM limits, which is nice, and it's temperature sensitive. So I have it set up with a main RPM limit of 6,000, and then it lowers that if it's really cold or really hot. So that's a nice thing about the, this. It has a lot of protection built in. Uh, sensor property is nothing there. Um, injection system is where you need to get up your injection system set up a little bit better. So your firing angle, the computer is going to determine this. I have not given this any of this information. I've not tried to do any of this stuff for it. Um, so it's kind of making those calculations. The dead time is a standard thing that was, that was already there. Um, you could adjust that if you knew more. Well, now, this is where the most important thing is. You've got to know the CCs on your injectors. Now, I know mine are 480 CCs because they went to Mr. Injector. They were flowed, and he sent me back a flow report and a uh, report on my injectors. Um, previously, this was set to 250. I thought that was the stock setting, which it must have been. Um, but the computer thought the injectors were tiny, and it was running them at a huge duration, and it was – just super rich. It was totally un un unusable. Um, so I changed it to 480 and it leaned it out a lot. That helped a ton. You can also make sure that you set it as zero to three ohms or one to three ohms if you're using stock G-Jet stuff. You need to know what kind of injectors you have and what their settings are. Um, just a quick drop down you can change here as you need to, but 2.3 ohms on the stock D-Jet injectors. So honestly, most of my time is going to be sent up here in the fuel base map. I'm not going to get too aggressive with the timing until I get a little more help or knowledge. I don't have an ox sensor, so really this is where everything's going to live.
right, success. We spent about 30 minutes on the phone with uh, Fernando at Haltech over in Australia. Shout out to him for the good uh, diagnostic and helping me with this setup. Uh, we believe, after talking to him, that the wideband that I have in there is outputting kind of a bogus signal. Um, so I don't know if there's a problem with the wideband or the placement or the sensor or the output. I don't know. So I'm either going to figure it out or we're going to get on a dyno and get a, a, a second one so we can check that uh, before I spend several hundred dollars on a new wideband setup. So uh, we went through a bunch of the settings and just some of the basic deal to get it started. Seems to run fine. I need to play with the ignition map a little bit. Um, and then after talking to him, I can tell I need some help. Um, so I got a grasp on the absolute basics in there, but there were so many things you can change and so many things you can do that I'm going to need some assistance here. So the good news is we are up, we are running. I think I have enough information to just kind of get it running up and basic. I do think I'm going to need some help before we try and drive it you know, a hundred mile round trip to work for Union, but uh, that's where we're gonna leave it off for tonight. We're gonna get some tuning done and this thing's gonna be on the road soon. Stay tuned to the Barefoot Garage for more Haltech 914 updates between episodes at Barefoot Garage Jacks over on Instagram. See you guys.